Hi everyone. Today I will show you how to create an antenna array and secondly how to terminate these antennas with a different impedance. So the reason is in a practical system most of the time these elements can go damaged. It can be short circuited, open circuited or terminated with some uh, inductive or capacitive loads. So how we can model that in simulation and see the effect of radiation on top of it. So for that what I am going to do is I have a simple antenna model. I'll show you how to create a simple antenna from the simple antenna model to a antenna array. So you can see a port is created between the ground and top patch. And what I can do is I am just created this as a 3D component. So whatever the geometry you have it select it and right click and replace with the 3D component that will have the antenna array everything together. Now you need to make sure this is go to the solution type and see this you are selected HFSS with the uh, hybrids and arrays and uh, you can create antenna in either model or terminal. So I'll recommend a terminal. If you have a web port then you need to use a model port. Uh, now what I'm going to do is there is an option right click over here create array and I can say I want 10 by 10 and make the visible on and go to the unit cell and say I wanted to make a, okay I'll go back one more time I'll make sure 8 by 8 array and just keep a padding cell to one so that it will create something like this so you are going to create a 8 by 8 array with all using this antenna one model the padding cell what it does is it is not visible to the user but it can create something like a an a edge element so the same element with the zero or vacuum material property will be filled on the edge which creates something like a, uh, a small area air volume around the antenna array so this is a way where you can easily create a antenna array based on how many number of elements you want and uh, you will be also will be able to see what is a name of this antenna element a11, A21, A31 and that corresponds to here. So go to edit source you can see A11 this is nothing but array 11, array 12, array 13 how this is arranged 11, 12, 13, 14 it's arranged in this fashion and uh, A11, A21, A31 arranged in this way so you can see total of 64 element created over here so this antenna I already created at my side you can see here the array is created but you can see is uh, the vacuum array I have created so if you have a three two 3d component one is your antenna one and there is a blank which just have an air box around it then I can create uh, something like this then I don't need a padding cell here so if you go here I made a padding cell of 0 but I made it 10 by 10 and said inside this all element I need antenna and the outside will be uh, blank material blank models so you'll be able to simulate it and with this one uh, you just have to run the simulation so you can run it it will take very less time to simulate it then what you can do is if you want to steer the radiation to different different direction so then go to HFSS go to um, toolkit then there is something called finite array beam angle calculator go back here then you tell what is the frequency which direction you wanted to steer it let's say I want to steer to 20 degree in phi equal to zero then automatically calculate what is a progressive phase shift you need for that and if you want to create some kind of aperture tapering to reduce the side lobe you can apply that tapering windows also so I'm not doing that I'm just click apply and 
creating the variables and click done now you will be able to see the radiation is going to steer towards 20 degree and it will get updated automatically without rerunning the simulation now if i okay now you can see it's radiating towards 20 degree in the theta 20 directions so if you want to go back again to zero you don't need to go and open the toolkit you will see all the expressions and equations are available so here somewhere you will see some expression like a theta scan is 20 degree so if i just change to zero degree it will automatically come back to the broadside radiation now it came to broadside radiation right uh, if you are using the terminal network design there is an option coming in edit source itself so if you go to edit source you will see that all the antenna locations so starting from 2 to 2 to 3 to 4 and you can see something like a terminated so if i enable some termination let's say the first element i would like to terminate with the 50 ohm uh, that indicating the antenna of one is not going to radiate but that is going to terminate with 50 ohm uh, in some case it can be short circuited because of damage of that antenna some short circuit happened what you can do is you put 0.1 ohm in that case so but some case you may have some scenario of kind of open circuited so that time I'll say one erase to six that is one mega ohm resistance I put at the port that's going to indicate that port is open circuited some cases it can be in this case uh, let's say reactants the R plus JX the reactants can be 100 ohm this is kind of inductive load is connected to that uh, if it is something like a minus that indicating a capacity load connected to that so you can add any kind of uh, uh, loading conditions it's customized uh, if you want to just terminate you can just go and say which all elements are you wanted to terminate it you can just go and terminate it the advantage is you can you'll be able to see the radiation pattern instantaneously after updating this port you won't notice much variation because most of the antennas are terminated but you can see the side lobes are reduced a lot and uh, the radiation pattern is changed you also see the ray the gain also will go into change i'll show you an example which i already created out of this model uh, so here you can see when i use these all antennas with a uh, one volt i can see the radiation patterns are coming good but if i check some port and say the resistance is 50 ohm then i put in most of the places reactance is zero you can clearly see how the radiation pattern is changed and how the ray uh, the, from the ideal pattern how the side lobes are changing and from the field plot you can see uh, some of the antennas are radiating some of the antennas are terminated so it's very easy for you to see the field the radiation pattern and everything by assuming couple of the antennas are terminated to that uh, here you will see there are 20 random antenna elements in the 64 element terminated with a, a short circuited condition and i'm sorry so you can see over here a couple of antennas are radiating some of them are short circuited and this the effect of radiation pattern also visible over here and this all can be done without rerunning the simulation 
these kind of uh, shaped beam antennas are very common for applications most of the time what will happen is uh, you will have a feeding network so this antenna or elements are connected with the circulator then amplifier this amplifier with respect to the input power it will linearly increase but uh, at some point when the 1 dB compression points are coming your power going to be get saturated so if you apply 10 dBm you will get a uh, 1 watt power but if you increase to some other power so it's, it's telling up to minus 6 dBm minus uh, 4 dBm input power you are getting the good gain uh, of about uh, dBm okay this is dBm then this is about gain the gain is about 20.5 dB and after that you see the power is increasing but the gain or your RF power is not increasing so in such cases what will going to happen is your power may not be increasing too much uh, and that can create a change in the radiation pattern similarly you can see some kind of a phase shifter over here this phase shifter can be analog or digital let's consider a 5 bit phase shifter it cannot shift the phase from 0 2 degree 3 degree because 2 raised to 5 32 so the 3 family 360 degree phase shift will just divided by 32 so you will have a restrictions about 0 then you can go to like 30 degree then go to 60 degree but in between phase you will have a no option to set it up so there will be phase error there will be amplitude error and there will be dynamic range issues and other things will come so these effect all can be integrated like connecting with the circuit and you will see what is happening at uh, uh, 0 dBm power and when it going more than 40 dBm when it is linear it's changing from the linear region to non-linear region you can see the power at the main areas are reduced but side lobes are increasing so it is there is a way you can connect your antenna to circuit and then see the effect in the radiation pattern